Let's take a look at combustion analysis problems. Combustion analysis has to do with reactions that have to do with combustions. So what do you think about when you think of a combustion reaction? You might think of fire, you might think of an explosion, and that's exactly what it is. A combustion reaction is basically an organic compound, generally a hydrocarbon, and a hydrocarbon is a carbon-hydrogen substance, like you see here, and it reacts with oxygen, the oxygen that's in our air, to produce carbon dioxide and water. Now, we'll talk more about reactions once we get to the reactions unit, but for now, you just have to know the general combustion reaction, which is this right here. Now, the hydrocarbon, which is the CH compound, has an X and a Y in the formula right now because we are going to determine those subscripts, the X and the Y. We are going to determine the empirical formula and sometimes we'll be asked to determine the molecular formula. Now usually, we, when we say hydrocarbon and when we talk about combustion reactions, we are usually talking about this carbon-hydrogen compound, but sometimes you will see that this hydrocarbon is also bonded to a chlorine or an oxygen or a nitrogen or any of the nonmetals really. So for these combustion analysis questions, in order to determine this formula of our hydrocarbon, we are going to consider the law of conservation of mass, which states that matter is neither created nor destroyed. In other words, mass is neither created nor destroyed. What this means is that the amount of an element in the reactants will equal the amount of that element in the product. Meaning, if we start out with a certain mass of that element, then we will end up with the same mass of that element by the end of the reaction. Now, the element may not be in the same compound, but the amount of that element in the reactants and the product should be equal. So based on this law, we're going to do some calculations to determine the empirical and molecular formulas of our hydrocarbon. Let's take a look at example one. An unknown compound, CXHY, contains only carbon and hydrogen. This fuel is fully combusted with oxygen to yield 23.118 grams of CO2 and 4.729 grams of H2O. Find the empirical formula for this unknown compound. So the steps to finding the empirical formula is going to be similar to the steps that we did previously. We're going to first calculate the individual moles of carbon and hydrogen. So you have to realize here that both carbon and hydrogen are in our unknown compound, and also that carbon is in carbon dioxide and hydrogen is in water. So let's first take a look at carbon. We're going to take our carbon dioxide amount because the amount of carbon produced in our carbon dioxide should equal the amount of carbon that was in the original compound. So we're going to work out our conversion so that we have carbon by itself. So according to the problem, we have 23.118 grams of carbon dioxide. So that's what I start with. And from here, remember we're trying to get two moles of carbon, so really I'm going to go to moles of carbon dioxide. So moles of carbon dioxide, grams of carbon dioxide on the bottom, moles over grams, that's our molar mass. So in one mole, we have 44.01 grams of carbon dioxide. Now from here, we're going to determine the moles of carbon. So in one mole, of carbon dioxide, there is one mole of carbon, since there's one carbon to two oxygens, right? So in one mole of carbon dioxide, we have one mole of carbon and also two moles of oxygen, but here we're only interested in the carbon, so that's all we consider. Our units cancel out, and we get a total of 0 0.5253 moles of carbon. We're going to do the same thing for hydrogen. So this time we have 
4.729 grams of water and then we're going to find the moles of hydrogen. So in one mole of water, there's 18.02 grams of water. And we bring down moles of water down here. And in one mole of water, there are two moles of hydrogen. So again, all I did was count how many hydrogens there are in H2O. So then you calculate this and you get an answer of 0.5249 moles of hydrogen. The next thing you want to do is divide by the smallest number. So divide by 0 0.5249249. So this is equal to 1. And this is also equal to 1. So the empirical formula for this is going to be C1H1, CH. Next, let's take a look at example number two. You'll notice here that the unknown compound now has an extra element in there, oxygen. So this unknown compound is CXHYOZ, which contains the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So here we're going to first calculate the individual moles of carbon and hydrogen, and then we're going to convert our moles of carbon and hydrogen to mass. And from that, we can determine the mass of oxygen. So the reason why we do oxygen last is because oxygen is in our unknown sample, but it's also in the other reactant, O2. So we wait until the very end to calculate oxygen. We're basically going to do um, process of elimination to determine the mass of oxygen. And so first we're going to start with carbon and hydrogen. So in order to get to the moles of carbon, we're going to use the mass of carbon dioxide. So 1.9061 grams of carbon dioxide. And we're going to convert that to moles of carbon dioxide and then we'll convert that to moles of carbon. And we get a value of 0 0.04331 moles of carbon. Next, we'll do it for hydrogen using the mass 0 0.3370 grams of water. Let's convert that to moles of water, and then we'll convert it to moles of hydrogen. And you get a value of 0 0.03740. Next, because we still can't do oxygen, we actually need to find the masses of carbon and hydrogen. So we'll convert our moles of hydrogen and moles of carbon to the mass. So one mole of hydrogen is equal to 1.01 grams of hydrogen. We get a value of 0 0.03777 grams. For carbon, we have one mole of carbon is equal to 12.01 grams of carbon to get a value of 0 0.5202 grams of carbon. And to determine the mass of oxygen, we're going to go ahead and subtract the masses of carbon and hydrogen from the total mass of the unknown sample. So I'm going to write that in the middle of my screen because I ran out of room. So 0 0.75490 grams minus 0 0.5202 minus 0 0.03777 is equal to 0 0.19693 grams of oxygen. So next what we want to do here is we want to convert our mass of oxygen to moles. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we need to determine the empirical formula for this compound, right? And so if we want to determine the empirical formula, we do need to know the moles of each element. So in one mole of oxygen, we have 16 grams of oxygen, and that equals 0 0.01231 moles of oxygen. So now we're going to use the number of moles that we found for oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen, and write the empirical formula. So we're going to put in the order of C, H, then O, because that's what the problem states. 
So here I just copied down the moles of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen that we determined in our previous slide. And I'm gonna go ahead and divide it by the smallest value. And this is what we get when we divide by 0 0.01231. So because we have half of a number, and remember we can't have half of a number, we need a whole number, we multiply by two so that we are dealing with whole numbers. So we have seven, six, and two. And so our empirical formula is C7H6O2. Now the second part of the problem says, determine the molecular formula for the compound if the molecular mass is 244.26 grams per mole. So we're going to find the molar mass of C7H6O2, which is 122.13. And we will calculate N, which is equal to 2. And we're going to distribute that to our empirical formula to have a molecular formula of C14H12O4.